My name is uh, George Williams. I'm from the University of New South Wales, where I work as a professor in the field of public law. I work particularly in the fields of human rights and national security. And in those fields, there's some enormously exciting and interesting things happening at the moment. Uh, how do we rebalance the relationship between the citizen and the state when it comes to protecting the community from terrorism? How best do we protect human rights within a country like Australia, where we've never had a national bill of rights? These are the sort of questions I'm interested in, and uh, I'm here in Ireland because uh, there's some very interesting answers and comparisons that can be drawn here with what's happening in my own country. There are a lot of comparisons between the United Kingdom and Australia. We, in fact, have got a common law system that we've derived from the United Kingdom. We've got a Westminster system of parliament. And so we're dealing with a similar, a, a range of similar issues within a similar political and legal framework. So it does mean that the countries have a lot to learn from each other. And certainly I'm here to talk a bit about what Australia is doing when it comes to human rights protection, but also to learn about the debate in the United Kingdom about the own, their own crisis that's afflicting the Human Rights Act here. Well, the Human Rights Act debate uh, has big implications for us in Australia. Uh, that's because it's very influential internationally as a model of human rights protection. It's also the model that's in place in the home of the Westminster Parliament. And uh, as Australia considers moving to a national bill of rights, or also state and territory bills of rights, what happens here to the Human Rights Act will be very influential. It's also important because when we come to drafting our instrument, the debates here will affect how we might draft our own instruments at home as to what works, what doesn't work. How do we balance the roles of the courts and parliament, for example? And these are perennial debates here in the United Kingdom and uh, certainly there's a lot we can learn before we engage in similar debates ourselves. Well, Australia doesn't have a National Bill of Rights, but we do have Human Rights Acts in place in Victoria and the Australian Capital Territory, our sub-national jurisdictions. So there are already examples of adaptions of the UK Human Rights Act, and uh, what's so interesting for the UK debate is we've tried to respond to some of the problems here by drafting things differently. We've, for example, given greater prominence to the role of Parliament. We've tried to give a lesser role in some cases to the role of the courts, and it does mean as the United Kingdom is thinking about repealing or altering its own Human Rights Act, that there's something that can be learned from Australia about how our own adaptions have worked and whether in fact they might be suitable here as well in the United Kingdom. Well, Australia is in the midst of its own debate over the Trans-Pacific Partnership and it's throwing up issues around sovereignty and whether it's the right deal for my own country. And these of course are debates that are resonating around the world and they're not resolved in Australia yet. We're really in the thick of a debate about whether this is the right step forward for us. Well, certainly there is a, a connection between signing on to international instruments and human rights protection, and you don't need to look further than the United Kingdom for that when you look at the overarching influence of Europe and its impact upon human rights protection. It's the same in Australia. We've signed up to a range of international human rights treaties, and also the trade treaties can have implications as well. So it's a very complex business in this age to draft a domestic human rights instrument because it's not just speaking to the local people, but speaking about a nation's place in the, at the world at large.